God. Well, I want to just um, start off with sharing my testimony. I do have a message today, but I, I felt for years I, I never liked to share my story. And the Lord said to Haviland, when you don't share your story, you actually rob me of my glory. Because in your story lies the glory of God. So I want to just tell you really quick about what I used to do on the other tracks. Come on, say the other tracks. <laughs> I was born in New York City. I was born in the Bronx, the Boogie Downey Bronx sites in the house. Woo -woo. I was born in the Bronx during the late 70s where drugs were decimating the inner cities and cocaine was destroying the suburbs. You guys remember those times. And I was born during the late 70s. My mother named me Angela Cornish. That was the name that my mom gave me. And when I was uh, around the age of three, I was sent down the stream of the foster care system. The reason why I call it a stream is because I believe, just like Moses, I was sent down that stream of uncertainty. I didn't know if I was coming or going, but God had a better plan. Say, God had a better plan. So I was sent down the stream. My name was changed from Angela Cornish. My first foster home was a family by the name of the Rock family. You guys know Chris Rock? He's a very famous comedian in Hollywood. I lived with the Rock family. I was Angela Cornish, then I was Angela Rock. And then at the age of seven, oh my God, is that Kathy? Pastor Kathy, give it up, I love you. Sorry, love you. I used to preach for her years ago. Sorry, I just had to, she, she has my heart. <laughs> I love you, thank you for coming. So I used to, I was sent down the stream and at the age of seven I went into a home, my first adopted home. And I remember walking in my first adopted home and my adopted mom walking up to me and saying, I'm gonna change your name. Now I'm like, wait a minute, again? Because I didn't just have my name changed once, but I was literally had my name changed three times or I was called by another name three times. And she came up to me and she said, I'm gonna change your name to De Havilland. And I'm like, to who, to what, and to why? Because I'm from the boogie down Bronx. Come on. I don't give me any other name but De Havilland. I didn't want to be picked at. I don't want that name. But she takes me to court. And I remember at seven years old, sitting in the courtroom with such an identity crisis, wondering and asking the question as a little girl, would somebody please tell me who I am? Would somebody please define me? And as we get in the courtroom, I get my name changed later on from 7 to 17. What do you do when you don't know who you are? You go to a generation, right, and you look and you search for identity. And unfortunately, I was looking in all the wrong places. I went to the drug scene, but I knew I couldn't do drugs because I saw what it did to my mom. So then I went to the club scene, but then I realized I couldn't dance, so that wasn't going to work. <laughs> I was the only black girl in the club that didn't know, how to, didn't, know how to, didn't know how to do it. So I would just stand off in the corner. So I was like, this, is, this ain't going to work. This ain't going to work. So I, I couldn't do the party scene. 17 years old, I found myself sleeping on a park bench in New York City. I don't know if you guys ever knew that. I found myself at the bottom of the bottom of the bottom of the bottom. And what happens when you're at the bottom? You can't go any lower. And I remember when I was on this park bench saying, how in the world did I get here? Feeling like that little girl that was sent down the stream of the foster care system. And as I'm on this bench, a praying mother who was a friend of the family came and found me on the bench. How many praying mamas do we have in the house today? Come on, praying mamas are dangerous. She found me on the bench and she said, what are you doing on this bench? She said, you don't belong here. See, she had prophetic eyes. She said, you're going to come home with me. And I remember going, I was so drunk that I, I was, she was glowing and she had oil. I guess intercessors like it to anoint themselves. <laughs> so she was glowing. I'm drunk. I'm going, it's already bad. I'll go home with you. What do I have to lose? Her name was Blanche Evans. She's in heaven now. God bless you, Blanche. So she takes me home with her, and I walk into her room, her house, and there's oil all over the walls. <laughs> we must have a bunch of intercessors in the house. <laughs> there's oil all over the walls because she had been pacing, praying for me, praying for this generation. 
She had been praying, and she was playing Ron Cannoli. And I was like, you guys remember Ron Cannoli? Oh, come on, Jesus. So she's playing Ron Cannoli. She's full of spirit of God. She's prophesying, I'm drunk. Demons are manifesting. She's worshiping God. And this woman began to disciple me before she ever converted me. Let me say that again. She began to disciple me before she ever converted me. See, we've got to get to discipling people before she ever converted me. And I remember in 1997, she said, I'm taking you to revival. I was like, what's revival? Because I grew up in the church, but I didn't understand the revival culture. She says, you're going to go to Toronto, and you're going to go to this church, and that church, and Times Square Church. And I would, she would drag me in the meetings, don't move, sit there, and I would be exposed to the presence of God. And suddenly my heart became tender to the Lord. And in 1997, because of this praying mama, this woman who would not relent, who wouldn't quit, who wouldn't give up, she, she was so, my husband says, the only difference between a a praying mama is a pit a praying mama is a sorry a praying mama is like a pit bull and the only difference is because they have lipstick <laughs> because pit, she never let up she didn't let go she kept contending so I gave my life to the Lord or more like the Lord took my life in 1997 and then the Lord asked me this question he said to Haviland who do you think named you and I'm like okay God you're not schizophrenic and I wasn't trying to disrespect the Lord, but I said, Lord, you already know. You, you, you know that I didn't just have my name changed once or twice, but three times. So why are you asking me this? He said, to Haviland, because I want to reveal to you that I am the God who named you. I'm the God who named you. So later on in life, after getting saved, I joined the House of Prayer movement, IHOP, Kansas City. Because I said, what's the most craziest thing I can do? Because I was so extreme in the world. I said, I know, I'll join the Night Watch in Kansas City. <laughs> so I show up in Kansas City, 2001, straight off of a bus. I go into the prayer room. Mike Bickle jumps off, runs down. He says, who are you? He goes, I want you to pray on the microphone. We need African Americans in the prayer movement. I'm like, oh, this is, okay. <laughs> But I joined the prayer, and I started contending and praying. And as I'm there at IHOP, I meet a pilot. And he said, did you say your name was de Havilland? I said, yeah. He said, sit down, young lady. I need to tell you the history of your name. You guys remember when I said God was going to tell me the meaning of my name? So I sit with this pilot, and he says, during World War II, the Defense Department were making these bomber planes. But when they went to make these planes, they did not believe necessarily in the design of the plane. So instead of giving metal to make these planes in the war, they gave wood to create these planes. But because of the wood, these planes became some of the fastest planes in World War II. He said these planes, because of the wood, they could fly low and they could fly high and they named these planes the De Havilland Bombers. And he said, and what these planes would do at night, they would go late at night into Germany where Hitler would have his plants and they would drop bombs in and literally take out these plants. And as this pilot is talking to me, the Lord said, I told you I was going to reveal to you that I'm the God who named you and I framed you and I saved you through the wood of my cross. And when men did not believe in your design, I had a better plan and I've called you to fly with me and drop bombs of intercession in your generation I am the God who named you and I want to come today to say there's a generation outside these doors sleeping on the park benches of Harvard and Yale and all these schools waiting for a praying mama to approach that bench and snatch them off and say this is who you are this is who you are this is who you're called to be I define you not the world and can I tell you today suddenly this little crack baby my life begin to make a whole lot of sense